Research and innovation in Futuris. I lost the swing in my left arm. It didn't work very well. I realized something was wrong. My problem started 11 years ago, so I went to the doctors and they eventually diagnosed Parkinson's disease. It was 2002. I can't work in the garden as often as, or for, for as long as I used to. I do electronics, dealing with small components, trying to solve them. So no, it's a no, just a big no-no for me. Can't do it. Three people who suffer from an incurable disease. In Europe, there are around 75,000 new cases every year. This is the story of how European patients and researchers have teamed up to fight Parkinson's disease. At this hospital in the Netherlands, there is an unusual experiment. It involves a 68-year-old patient with Parkinson's disease. I started suffering from pain in my lower back, but it took almost three years for doctors to identify my disease as Parkinson's. That late diagnosis motivated her and other volunteers to take part in a preclinical trial aimed at testing a revolutionary pen. It's been designed to help to identify the elusive early stages of the disease. We have to um, measure uh, muscle activity so we can um, uh, see what happens in muscles when they move, when they make the drawing movements. The writing patterns of both Parkinson's patients and healthy subjects are compared. Those patterns can possibly help researchers to determine if a patient is suffering from Parkinson's disease or other neurological disorders. So we do find quite clear differences between the healthy controls and the Parkinson patients that we have measured. And um, on the one, one hand, these differences are what we expected. So for instance, Parkinson patients move slower in all tasks, but also some differences are a little less expected. For instance, in the writing tasks, we found that Parkinson patients write considerably smaller than healthy controls, even if they're not complaining about writing smaller. So this, in particular, may be quite a sensitive tool for uh, further diagnosis. Just don't think about how we write. The pen has been re-engineered by scientists under a European Union research project. The prototype has sensor technologies that help to understand the complex coordination processes used by the nervous system during the course of handwriting. Device that you see here. It's basically we've been building on previous techniques for recording handwriting and motion, uh, starting with digitizer tablets for recording handwriting, uh, also using motion analysis systems to look at upper body motion and limb motion. Um, we've then built a pen system with these different sensors and data analysis techniques, uh, developing algorithms that would automatically analyze motion and the control uh, behind the motion that the nervous system uses. The next steps will involve the comparison of writing patterns between patients with Parkinson's and those suffering from tremors and other movement disorders. Early diagnosis, say scientists, is key to offer patients better advice, monitoring and rehabilitation. What I would hope is that we get a tool which is easy to use, say within 10 or 15 minutes, gives you a profile of a likely diagnosis. I don't think we'll say with certainty that this is Parkinson's disease, that's not possible, but it might be possible to say this is a patient that should really be seen by an experienced neurologist. We can make a distinction between other conditions, essential tremor or what have you. Or we can assume, well, this is perhaps a, a movement problem, but it's more related to an elderly person uh, uh, who will not develop into a Parkinsonian syndrome. Then you can tell the person more um, safely um, what his or her future will be. Meanwhile, here in Belfast, researchers are trying to develop new rehabilitation tools based on sensorial stimulation. The first thing scientists had to understand was if and how Parkinson's patients' movements can improve when there is a sort of trigger in their environment. 
We are trying to understand more what happens when there is additional sensory information in the environment as you can perceive by hearing see, see, or seeing and why it improves the motor control, the movement in Parkinson's disease patients. I can see the benefit you know, in my golf swing to start with is much improved. Jim, how are you? On. There's going to be a large tree that's going to be covered in apples. And the apples Researchers then develop the tailor-made video games on existing commercial platforms. Games allow Parkinson's patients to improve balance and overall mobility. We're interested in understanding how the brain can use perceptual information to guide our actions. So for example, in the games that are being played, you see the falling apples. That's perceptual information that tells us what's happening, so it guides the movement. That apple's falling at a certain speed and the player has to control the movement of the basket so they actually catch okay. that. Okay. And then we'll launch the game. Both yeah, patients and researchers see huge psychological and physical advantages in these easy, fun rehabilitation techniques. I find it fun. I find it enjoyable. Uh, I find it worth doing. And John and I have been coming down together over the trial and in a sense of being competing a little bit against one another, it doesn't matter who wins, it's just the, the fun of it and the companionship. It makes you realise how much you can actually do and I think that that confidence then will help uh, people like John actually get, uh, the need, get the confidence to go out for a walk, do other types of physical activity which will then help their balance in the long run as well. So it's this kind of circular motion, so it's building up, so it's getting the confidence from the games and then using that confidence to go out for a walk and then whenever you go for a walk you're getting more confidence and then you're going to go out for a walk more often, so it's kind of a cycle. I think for mobility is the big issue here. I think you've actually behave more mobile than they normally are and that's, that's very useful. From a physical point of view, you're essentially encouraging them to move uh, particularly around the torso area, a lot of our um, participants have commented that they feel much looser here, that they can rotate a lot better, and that rigidity in the body is lost a little bit, so they feel a bit freer, a lot more mobile. It's brilliant. It's made a big change because it's exercise with fun. But researchers see even further. They are currently investigating if Parkinson's patients can improve their gait by just listening to regular sounds, including, for instance, the sound emitted by their own feet while they are walking. Using these reflective markers, we can get very detailed information about how people can regulate the timing of their walking. One thing that tends to happen with Parkinsonism is that people would tend to shuffle. And one thing we can measure is stride length, so we can look to uh, help people to extend their stride to, uh, to walk more efficiently. What this shows us is how the different parts of our body, so the head, the torso, the arms and the legs importantly, how these are moving as she walks. And we can try and understand what sort of differences there are in Mary's walking when she's perceiving the sounds compared to when she's trying to walk without these guides and we can see whether there's improvement, we can see whether there's a better stability in her actions. Researchers, scientists and patients who have volunteered hope it will lead to better, easier and more effective rehabilitation treatments in the near future. Um, do you see that people are actually taking such an interest? in it um, is actually very encouraging uh, uh, to see that, it, uh, that there is a life with Parkinson's, that it isn't just you come to an end.